it's seven o'clock. We're going to get started to the, with the Wednesday wind down with Dan and friends, um, the webinar and YouTube sh channel for frustrated hikers that can't go out because of COVID-19. Um, I like to go out and meet with my friends and drink beer and hang out, talk with them and go hiking. Kind of hard to do either right now. So I'm going to do it online. So I'm Dan Conger, the host. And tonight, I'm not drinking beer. I'm drinking Maker's Mark. So, cheers. Wow. Yeah. And you can, if you would introduce yourself. I'm Melody, and um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you guys about first aid kits tonight. Um, I teach first aid classes for the Red Cross, and uh, with a, you know, we'll put a wilderness spin on all of my classes. So, awesome. I'm also a nurse, so I have a little bit of background in first aid. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I, I had... When, when I approached it with this idea, I kind of thought, well, there's, there's first aid kits, there's first aid kits that, you know, that you might have, that I might have, and that somebody new might have, and, and kind of, you'll talk, we're going to talk about some of the things that go into a first aid kit, but we'll talk about how to personalize them or customize them for each person. So, well, um, I think one of the first things we're going to talk off with, talk about was what makes a good first aid kit for somebody out there? So is that, is, is, am I starting off right? Is that where you were going to go? Yeah. First? I mean, there's a few basics that you want to keep in mind when you're putting your first aid kit together. And, you know, one of the most important things is proof. So you want everything in waterproof compartments, even if that's a Ziploc bag or um, the, you know, the bag that you buy to put all of your, you know, your dry sack. On everything in waterproof, uh, in waterproof compartments because your supplies aren't going to be any good if you drop them in the stream. So, yeah. so I the 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 uh, and I'm curious how big yours is, but my first aid kit is rather I don't know it's it's maybe a little smaller than yours, but yeah, I'm using one of those roll top bags that I that I found online and and uh, what do yeah, you yeah I just have mine in this little Eagle Creek bag, but mm -hmm. everything inside is, you know, it's all in its own. And this is water resistant, but everything inside is the blood bags. So, okay. So, so you've got individual components are, are waterproof. Okay. Yes. Great yes. strategy. So, you know, and, and the other thing is when we talk about, you know, personalizing our kits, we, you know, we want to make sure that our first aid kits are trip specific. Mm -hmm. So if we're going on a day hike um, up Cal's Mountain, you might have a different uh, first aid kit than if you're doing a seven day backpack with friends in the wilderness. So, um, you know, they should be trip specific for what you have planned for me i'm a pretty avid backpacker so i have i take the same kit uh with me on day hikes and i just call it training because it's a little more weight but i just call it training I, i've toyed i've toyed with the idea of having a supplemental um first aid kit that i would bring on longer trips but like you i think i've just kind of settled on the same the same kit f for wherever i'm going yeah and, you know, Im most important is the knowledge that you have. And I always, you know, I'm always going to advocate for everyone to take some kind of first aid training um, and at least have some sort of uh, manual or there's a first aid app that the Red Cross has that you mm -hmm. can get um, and it works offline. So um, those are great um, instructional manuals for you to carry um, with you. Um, and again, you, you know, you want to personalize your kit. So, um, you know, making it trip specific and personalizing it, you know, with your own medications, these first aid kits that you buy, they have, you know, the basic medications, but if, you know, you want to personalize it and include your own medications and add a few extra days in case you get stuck um, or lost, you have extra medications. And if you have a medical condition, you want to make sure in your first aid kit that you write down what your, medica your uh, medical condition is, if you have any allergies, um, an emergency contact, those kind of things. So personalizing that first aid kit once you get it together is really important. Um, having a, a paper and pencil in there just to take little notes is nice, even if it's one of those little tiny pencils. Um, importantly, including sterile absorption because just about everything else um, 
can be improvised on, but you can't improvise on sterile absorption. And we can talk about that a little bit more in detail later, but um, having sterile absorption is important. And evaluating your, your kit um, frequently. So what we do is at the end of every year, we have, our, we have a first aid party and uh, we replace all our kids, you know, in January and switch out all of our dressings and all of that to keep everything fresh because I've seen a lot of the leaders, you know, they'll have the same kit for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I think that's such a brilliant idea. I love that idea of that first aid party. That, that's something I heard probably in one of your classes years ago. I've never put it into play. How many people is enough to make a first aid party work? Well, probably about 10 or 15 people. Okay. You know, each person brings something. One person buys a box of gloves. The other one buys a bottle of, you know, mm -hmm. ibuprofen. And the other person buys some dressings. And then you just uh, have a potluck and you each get to share That's so you brilliant. don't have to buy the whole the right because we, we talked about this earlier is how challenging it is to find actually I think I've, my gloves died in my kit so I don't have gloves in my kit anymore but I don't need a whole damn box of gloves I just need two pairs and even if I looked across all my first aid kits in my house I need five or six pairs I don't need that many so that's a I, I think it's a wonderful idea I really like that well, or next time you go to your doctor's office, just uh, <laughs> put a pair in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, so, you know, those are some of the things that really help you make your great personalized first aid kit. Um, and then, you know, you would just do your general additions. Okay, great. Very nice. So is that when, so at your, your, essentially your annual first aid party, that's when you would kind of evaluate what's in there and then to, and to restock it, yes. if you didn't do it. So and to that point, do you do a restock? If you weren't doing a first aid party, how often do you recommend a restock or a reevaluation on a first aid kit? Probably once a year um, is probably good enough. The idea is you don't want to have, uh, alcohol pads in there that are all dried out that you've had in there for three years because you're just wasting weight and uh, when you need it it's not going to be there and your medications are probably going to be expired so just take all those things out leave them at home and have your first aid party every year in January for the first of the year and uh, put all the fresh things in there and then you're good to go awesome nice so it sound, there's, there's some sort of an integration with your first aid kit and 10 essentials because in mine, this is not just my first aid kit, right? I, I have, my trail name is MacGyver. So I've got repair items in there, right? So I've got wire and zip ties and other things. It's not, it has nothing to do with first aid. Um, and then I've got, you know, some of my 10 essentials in there, but there, there, there is a crossover between those two, right? That's exactly right. Um, you know, your 10 essentials are part of your first aid kit and your first aid kit is part of your 10 essentials. They work hand in hand, you know, to keep you safe and healthy. Um, you know, the 10 essentials, when you think about them, you've got your, you know, your navigation equipment, your illumination, which is, can be part of your first aid kit. Well, you don't want to get lost. If you need to see things in the dark. You've got your illumination and then your extra food and water stops you from getting low blood sugar, right mm -hmm. and then uh, your insulation your extra clothing that you carry um, and your rain gear stops you from getting hypothermic these are really part of your first aid kit even though they're not in this little bag right Right. So, you know, you have your sun protection that helps you, um, you know, stop from getting heat exhaustion or repair kit, your little pocket knife. Um, I just have a tiny little pocket knife yeah, and here. inside of there, I have a little tweezers and, you know, fingernail file and a little mm -hmm. scissors. So that's all part of it. Um, you have your emergency blanket, right? And, you know, and I like the bivy sack type 
Um, um, although I have used the flat ones and they work just fine too, but I really prefer the bivy sack type um, emergency blanket. I just those single sheets, but those work too. I've used the, the single sheet. I call the single sheet ones uh, pop tart wrappers, right? Because they're yes. same th thin mylar. <laughs> and then once you use them, they become baked potatoes. <laughs> oh yeah, right. They're single use on those for sure. <laughs> so, um, uh, and then you know your fire. You have your fire starter, your candles, or your lighter. Um, work hand in hand with you, you know together to keep you safe. So if, if, if you all see me looking off to the left, I've got my first aid slash repair slash part of my tennis special spread on my desk. And I'm kind of looking at it, making a mental note, like, I, I don't think I have that. Or I, I, I need it. There may be some things that I've, I've uh, pruned out that I need to add back in. That, and it, 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 I think what's tricky, especially if you kind of lean towards the ultralight side of the spectrum is, you know, you might have an ultralight through hiker. It's like, no, my first aid kit is two band-aids and four ibuprofen. It's like, ooh, okay. And then there's then there's the other end of the spectrum. There's a full EMT kit. Um, but well, and that's the thing when 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 you you know you're thinking about your first aid kit, you see these people that buy these giant first aid kits that are this big, and you open them up, and I don't even know what half of that stuff is in there, and I'll right. bet you they don't either. So if it's okay if you have that big first aid kit, that's that's great yeah. if you can carry it. But the important thing is that you take everything out and you know how to use it, right? You know what it is. You know how to use it before you go out and, you know, you open right. it up and you don't even know what half of it is. Well, can you walk us through some of the things that, that, that are in a first aid kit then? Yeah. We kinda, um, we've kind of touched on a couple of them, but let, let's, let's dive into them. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of lists that you can get, but you know what what I'm going to recommend is you always want to make sure you have some sort of antiseptic wipes so that you can um, clean around wounds and things like that. Um, you know, and especially these days with uh, COVID going on, you want to make sure you have hand sanitizer and antiseptic wipes going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, those sterile dressings, right? And one of the uh, dressings that we talk about is, is OB tampons um, because these are really great for um, absorbing blood, okay, from wounds. And I just want to show the difference because I know not a tampon and a regular tampon, but a regular tampon is about this size. And this is an OB tampon. Right. And the problem with this one is it's fine, but you have all this extra plastic and things that are just actually trash. And so you're carrying around um, unnecessary weight where these are all individually wrapped. So you just have this. And um, these are great for absorbing blood from wounds. The obvious, we were actually on a backpack on one of the Channel Islands and one of the girls started and had nothing yeah. and we all put them together and she was good for the weekend, you know? Nice. Um, and, but they also make a great fire starter. So it's That's a right. three for, yeah. so you open this up, you fluff it all out and it lights fire like nobody's business. We tried it. So I, in my kit, I, I, I have a tamp on it. This one has like, a, I think this is a small cardboard applicator that's in there. Um, and I, <laughs> I think I was at a location that had free ones in the restroom. Like I need one of those for my kit. It's coming with me, but I'm also carrying a, uh, a pad as well. And, and my concept it is I'm thinking it could be double duty as, as a absorption, absorption pad. Absolutely. And I, I do carry a few of those pads as well in my um, first aid kit because they're, they're very, absorbent. they're very absorbent. So those are great things to add in. Um, I'm going to take a minute and remind everybody we're about the halfway point. It goes really quick, doesn't it? And if you've got any questions, uh, put them in the, the Q&A and we'll catch them towards the end. So, okay. Okay, good. And then sunscreen is, you know, you always want to have sunscreen. 
30 plus though. Don't get any of that seven or 10, you know, 30 plus sunscreen. And uh, moleskin, so moleskin or blister pads, and there's a lot of different um, ways you can have a blister pad. Some people use the duct tape, which is their 11th essential. Everyone, like you have your mm -hmm. ties, your 11th. So duct tape. And what I like to use is this. It's called, I have Tegaderm. Tegaderm? Okay. Yeah, um, that's the name, the brand name that we have. But um, it's just a transparent film and for cuts and abrasions as well because it's so um, easy. And once you put it on, you don't have to remove it for the rest of your trip. And it's going to keep your wound clean. You just put it on like that, and then you, you take this off. Oh, nice. And they stick really well. And um, so Wonderful. it's yeah. waterproof mm -hmm. and it keeps you, um, it keeps your wound clean or your blister covered. Um, usually under this though, I this zero form gauze, which is a little um, Vaseline impregnated gauze. Right. right. And cover that over the blister and then put the tegaderm over the top. Okay, cool. And I, I'm starting to see again where that the first aid kit party is really making sense because some of these might be tricky to find one or two of. I, I have found some of them in eaches, but it'd be so much easier to get a box of them and that's your contribution. Exactly. And uh, you can now buy this, these, but they call it a micro thin film at Okay. You don't have to get actual tegaderm. It's the same thing. Um, so something for blisters, the emergency blanket, which again is part of your 10 essentials. A little, the little tweezers for pulling out cactus and splinters and things like that. And mine is right in my, um, my little utility. Um, very not everyone does there's a lot of lots of ways to improvise that for sure um, you want to make sure you have for medicines an anti-inflammatory right some antihistamine for sure you want anti-diarrheals mm -hmm. right <laughs> and uh an antibiotic ointment. Um, so those are the medications that you should have at the very basic level in your first aid kit. And then a blood stopper, okay? Um, Don't have one of those, okay. Yeah, you want to have a, it's called a hemostat gauze mm -hmm. or a hemostat powder. And this can, this does a great job at stopping bleeding that won't quit. It looks, that, is that a Walgreens label on there? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's very attainable. That's nice. Yes. Yes. You can buy these hemostat gauze or hemostat powders now at Walmart. Um, sometimes they're called blood stopper or hemostat gauze, but those are really important to carry. So I, I found the, the little packets of antibiotic ointment or the triple antibiotic ointment. Um, two places that I found those is the work first aid kit. Yes. Okay. Um, but then it, then you diminish the work first aid kit, but that's what it's there for. Um, right. The other one is I found these and other things like this at minimus.biz and you can buy sample size everything. So once a season, I'll get those. The thing about that I like about antibiotic ointment is it's essentially like a Vaseline. So if you get monkey butt or other, other chafing issues, right, that's a great resolution to it. Um, and it's in a very compact pack. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And uh, I've uh, even found at um, some of these sporting goods stores that you can find refill packs. Nice. Th that will have the little small um, packets like that. And then uh, gloves. You want to always have a pair of gloves to, you know, keep yourself from getting body fluids on you if you need to help someone. And it's also a layer of warmth too. So it's a twofer. 
right? Um, your, your manual or download that Red Cross app on your smartphone. But uh, you can get just a one-page quickie manual mm -hmm. and, and put it in there. Because when you get hurt or nervous, um, you're not always thinking clearly. So you want to make sure you have something to follow. And uh, some of the extras I like to put in my kit, I take two cotton swabs. And um, I like the sting relief pads. So many of my hikers get stung by bees and things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, they say it really helps. I haven't used it myself, but they always say that it really helps with uh, bee stings or and then we lost a little bit of your audio there but we'll we'll limp through it happen or can you hear me now yep yep we're good oh okay it just i think it's just it i think it's working it, well, it's a combination of your connection and the Zoom connection. Any, it's either one of those. So, okay, we're so, at the mercy of the Zoom God. So, and then just one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, one of the leaders that helps me teach in my classes works for um, Mountain Search and Rescue, and he says the the thing that he uses most on his rescues are his Z Light pads. Oh. Okay. And how does he use, what are they used for mostly? Well, insulate people from the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, when they get hurt, it, you know, insulates them. If it's cold or wet, it, it will insulate them from, for hypothermia. Also, splints. Soft splints. Okay. Okay. Yes. And so. that, uh, and I have found that foam pads or I've used a, I've used a Z light as a sit, a Z light sit pad. I've also have, I use an air pad, but I've also used a gossamer eighth inch pad and I've used both of those. I've cut into those to, for all sorts of other repairs, right? Like one year I realized my hip belt was a size too big and it took me two years to figure that out. Okay. <laughs> Probably lost some weight or whatever it was, but I was able to mold that and, you know, cut off a couple inches or I've, I've you know, you can, you can modify take your other gear and modify it which exactly. actually that kind of brings us to a really good a really good another point that we we mentioned i think we got a little bit of time for it is kind of modifying modifying gear or improvising with some of the gear you have because especially if if something is more dramatic if you don't have that full emt kit and you know maybe maybe you have the skills or maybe someone on your team has the skills or you've just got the time and the wherewithal what are some things that you can adapt uh, to make work for uh, 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 essentially a victim. Well, we've we've talked about some, um, and you know those Z light pads can be used uh, to really uh, modify the things like that. Um, C collar to wrap around the neck if someone gets a whiplash or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for the, you know, if someone gets, say they break their arm, ways to modify for a sling, your shirt and roll it up, mm -hmm. you know, roll it up and then just pin here, you know, if you have a safety pin. Right. And yeah. then maybe use a belt to strap it down to your body. Um, and we do a great uh, exercise where I throw out, you know, Tent spikes and spoons and um, and different things that you might have in your um, camping gear, and we do a splinting exercise. So yeah. tent stakes have been used as splints. Um, we've uh, fashioned some litters. So one of the best ways I saw to make a litter is to take a jacket. Mm -hmm. and you can turn the sleeves inside out so you would bring the sleeves on the inside of the jacket okay. and then stick your uh, hiking pole through here so it's a right? double reinforcement okay yes and then you can make a sit on litter if you were to need to carry somebody um, so, so, so I guess that 
essentially what you got to do is channel your inner MacGyver, right? And exactly. maybe that's one of the first things, right? And I seem to remember this from your wilderness first aid kits. It's like, okay, something's gone wrong. Pause and let's just see what's going on. Evaluate the situation. And part of this evaluation is what are the resources we have? Do we have cell coverage? Do we have radio coverage? Do we have a spot device? And then what kind of materials do I have? And man, if you're, if you're a backpacker, you got a lot of stuff on your backpack. You have a lot of straps. You have a lot of material to work with. Now you might destroy your $200 backpack, but if, if you're going to get someone out, that's, it might be worth it. Well, and that's one of the things that we do cover is to remember that if you, you know, if you destroy something, you don't have that anymore. So if you take oh. a jacket and you use it, you cut it up to make a sling or whatever it is, or you're going to use that jacket to make a litter to carry someone out. Now someone doesn't have a jacket, right? Okay. So, you know, in that process, you always have to think through it. And is this something I can afford to, to be without? Okay. I had a couple questions come in. So I want to, I want to go through the, a, a few of those. Um, one of them is, is, uh, do you have any examples of, of when you used a first aid kit when backpacking. So I know you have, I know you have, so I'd like to, like to hear that. And I'd like to hear how you addressed materials. Like, so somebody, somebody's hurt. So tell us about that. And then how you, how you, uh, how do you use your first aid supplies or whose first aid supplies you used? Well, uh, so one thing that occurred on one of our backpacking trips was that I was going to take out I will never see an ear infection. Oh, right? okay. And I had a gentleman that had a hearing aid. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I had a gentleman that had a hearing aid and he had it repaired or something right before the backpack. He started to severe ear pain with green pus coming out. Oh, my. So um, we had to lavage the ear. So what we did is we, we boiled some water to make sure it was. A bulb syringe. Where'd you get the bulb syringe? I'm sorry. I missed that part. Someone had it in their backpack. Wow. They, Yes. Now, if I didn't have that, what I would have used would have been a clean Ziploc bag. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay, well, that's now. And then, whose materials when you were going after? If if it's a, a simpler one, if 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 it's a, a wound, for example, um, are you going to bust out your first aid kit to 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 help that person? Well, no, I hope not. Although I've done that, and then I don't have anything. I don't have my own stuff, right? right? So if someone does get hurt, you always want to use their supplies first. Um, you know, you always want to use their supplies first because once you use yours, then you don't have them anymore. And you're the first aid teacher and you need a Band-Aid because you cut your knee and you don't have to yeah. give them to everyone else and you're very embarrassed. Okay. Well, we've got just another minute left. Our time goes by really quick, so... I want to thank you, Melody, for sharing what you know. What would be fantastic is if you have a uh, equipment list, I, that would be fantastic. I would put that in the YouTube notes. So if you, if you send that to me afterwards, I'll put that on when I post okay. it tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to plug, you know, so, so Melody um, has runs first aid classes and she also does the first aid classes that support the Sierra club. So um, her first aid courses are called first aid gone wild. Um, I've, I, first time I took one of your courses, I loved it comp compared to the Red Cross first aid, which yes. to be honest, is not a high bar to set, but I definitely appreciate it. I appreciate what you do with your classes. So thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for having me, Dan. It's Absolutely. been a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, two things, um, sometime tomorrow I will have this up on YouTube and you can review it. You can see the other, other, uh, sessions of Wednesday wind down. If you've got some ideas, submit them in the comments or put them in the YouTube comments. That's great too. Next week, um, uh, Kit Davis is going to join us and she's going to share 
uh, about her trip on the JMT and how that might apply to you and how you might break it down into if you're going to through hike it or turn it into uh, section hikes and, and talk about that one. So thanks again. Um, good seeing you all. Melody, thanks again. We'll see you all next week. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.